Hello watchers, in this video we're going to be making a perspective theory from Toothless's point of view from How to Train Your Dragon. This will be an explanation on how the dragons became enemies of the Vikings, and also explain how the Red Death became the enemy of the dragons. Without further ado, let's start. I've been alone for a while now. After having lost my family at a very young age, this band of migrating dragons are the only individuals I've ever known. It seemed as though all of us were essentially the runts that either had never fit in, lost their family, or whatever other reason they may have for being alone away from their kind. Well, they're safety in numbers, so it's not like it mattered much. I didn't really dig the crowd, but being around them did help hide me, and let's be honest, I follow where there's food. Usually, the other dragons found food, and I followed, which made my job a lot easier. This particular day, I felt like doing some work on my own. I flew high into the sky and then dove deep, holding my breath for what seemed like forever. I saw that jelly thing again and I dove after it. I love those things, but they did have a very stinging sensation. Racing back out of the water, I flew high until I was above the clouds. This was perfect. Moments later, I hear a loud cry from one of the dragons. Oh, what now? They were always squabbling. You wanna know what chaos is? Having a whole bunch of different species of dragons flying together every day. For the most part, we've learned to get along with one another, but it's still very trying. And we all have very vastly different personalities. I flew ahead of the group and saw the most beautiful sight. A cluster of floating island rocks all over. At least, they had the appearance that they were floating because they sat on very thin legs. I've honestly never seen something like this before. Maybe in my dreams. We all flew towards them. These flying land clusters were quite the sight to behold and were full of verdant foliage. We all nested there, rested our wings. Could this finally be home? For as long as I've been with this group, they've been searching for something and I have no idea what it is. I was with another group before that joined this one, but this group became very big and those initial dragons I joined with broke off and went somewhere else. I don't know where, but clearly there were rumors about this magical place in the Earth's belly where not even the sea could swallow it up. A hidden world in the sea, bah. That sounded like foolishness to me and I never gave much credence to it. I was sure at that point in time those dragons were just looking for an excuse to break off from this large group. Whatever. Anyways, we soon settled down on these islands and things were peaceful. For the first time in a long time, I could actually go hunting and bring back my food to a designated area on one of these islands. We had enough space for the time being that we weren't bumping into one another. Of course, other dragons tried to dominate me by claiming my land, but I would not let them. I still remember my father and how he taught me to be brave. He would never stand for being pushed around and neither will I. One evening, while we were all settling down from a large meal, I felt the need to fly above the clouds. It was a particularly cool night that night, and I liked staying awake at night when most of the dragons were sleeping. I could hear two lovebirds making a lot of noise. They were getting increasingly annoying, and it just reminded me of how lonely I was. I stepped off the ledge of my little island cluster, and I dove, eyes closed, towards the sea. At the last minute, I extended my wings out to their full span and let the wind carry me up into the air. The cool wind was blowing at just the right speed that I did not have to flap very frequently. I was literally being carried by the air, but it was so soothing I felt like falling asleep on my flight. I had my eyes closed the whole time. I finally opened them to reveal that I was only inches away from crashing into a wave when I suddenly flapped vigorously to correct myself. Whew. I flew above the clouds, did a massive loop, and leveled out so I was just over the clouds. Suddenly. The air pressure changed underneath of me. I stuck my head underneath the clouds to see what was going on, but saw nothing. I have good night vision, and so in the distance I could see all the dragons sleeping in their respective places, if they weren't hiding in bushes or whatnot. But I couldn't see anything else. Weird. After spending enough time out on the clouds, I headed back to my resting spot. Ah, oh, that hobble grunt was in my spot. I landed so hard beside her that she changed her color to white immediately and hissed at me. I hissed in kind. How dare this ugly frill-wearing long neck frog challenge me! I scratched her face with my claw and she flew away. I will teach her. Didn't have to get that way. Could have been civil. Anyways, I actually was really tired and so I laid down to rest. 
and fell into a deep slumber. I knew it was a deep slumber, because the next time I awoke, dragons had been flying away in terror. There was a lot of clamor and a sloshing noise nearby. I looked to my right, and I was horrified at what I saw. The largest dragon I have ever seen was eating some of the other dragons completely whole. It was making its way towards me, eating them as it walked. This beast was terrifying. It had multiple eyes and it was so large. For a moment, I forgot how to fly. Right before it reached me, I remembered and dove straight down into the ocean. Days after that, the dragons and I all came together and decided we were going to war with this thing. It had stolen our homes and eaten some of our friends. Well, I wasn't really friends with any of the dragons, but I had become familiar with a lot of them. Remember those lovebirds? Well, the male had his female eaten right in front of him. She'd been carrying eggs that she was going to lay that night. It's not really that I really care for these dragons so much, but they had become my only family and we depended on each other for survival and now something was trying to take that away from us. After having lost my family, I never want to hurt like that again, so I keep my distance. Because things like that, like what happened to my family, and what just happened that night, happened at all. We took one whole week to plan, and then we tried to attack it at our home. We gave it everything we had, all our firepower combined, and we failed. We had to end up leaving the floating islands, but we didn't have to go too far because there was another island close by that was tall and hollow, so we used that to hide from it. But we couldn't hide for long. Somehow, it used an entry into the sea through a hole that led through the earth and up into that encased rock mountain. We literally watched it rise up from out of the liquid fire and swallow dozens of us. We roared in outrage and fear. The thing was hellbent on killing us. Its hunger was insatiable, like, unlike anything we've ever seen. It was a demon god. One of the dragons had an idea. She figured that if we could keep it fed, we could keep it from being hungry and thus keeping it from wanting to eat us. Right now, this thing followed us wherever we went, so some of the group dragons stayed in the mountain and it still tried to eat them, but it didn't seem to be all that hungry at the moment. The plan was simple. Keep it fed to keep it from eating us. As we fed it, it got larger and larger, and then we came up with another idea. If we could keep it fed and also make it large enough, it's possible it might not be able to escape from this mountain and back through the hole in the sea. Of course, we understood that it being so large, it could choose to burst out of the mountain if it really wanted to. Well, the plan was not to give it a reason to want to, so that's what we did. Unfortunately, all the fish and stuff that we ate regularly wasn't enough for it. It always made a low vibrating noise whenever it was getting hungry. That noise always drove fear into us. It still drives fear into me. We needed something that would keep it full for longer. Something that would give us enough time and give us a chance to even hunt for ourselves. So we flew out farther and farther until we smelled something. On a remote piece of land, we saw these clouds on the grass. It was very weird seeing clouds on the grass. I know clouds, but they're supposed to be in the sky. These clouds made weird noises. Was this the hidden world those dragons were talking about? I decided to be brave and dove straight for the clouds on the ground, thinking I would come out through the other side of that ground sky. But I ended up smashing into one of the clouds instead and came to a dead halt. It lay there still. It was not making any more noise. At least, I don't think it was. My head was ringing at the moment, so that could have been drowning it out. But as I inspected it, I realized that this cloud had eyes and legs. The other dragons that were flying above me instructed me to take it. The leader dragon said it was a living cloud, a ground cloud, and an obvious blessing from the sky. What did she think, it was a cloud's babies or something? She wanted to sacrifice it back to the monster, so that's what we did. We threw it in, and it was happy. Lately, the bigger it got is the more angry it got when we fed it. That's because what we were feeding it wasn't enough, and it was always so hungry. But when we put the cloud in its mouth, it was quiet for a few minutes. Then it roared loudly, demanding more of that cloud. So we sent out a large team of dragons to get more of these clouds. And this island 
was full of them. Other dragons that chose to stay close by supplemented the big beast with food that we had been eating from the sea. The rest of us went hunting. Eventually, on our hunts, we saw some strange creatures that the other dragons called man. Apparently, they liked these clouds too and wanted to keep them all for themselves, but they didn't understand that if that monstrous demon escaped from that mountain, none of us would be saved. We didn't have any beef with these things, but we needed those clouds. We spent a long time gathering the ground clouds from every place we could find them. The more we fed the demon these ground clouds is the more satisfied it was, at least for a longer time. The clouds seemed to generate also at the same pace the dragon demon became hungry again. It was perfect. For a while. There was one particular place that had a lot of them. It was getting harder and harder to find the ground clouds. Maybe they were getting wise, or maybe they weren't breeding fast enough anymore. This place always had them, so we hunted there frequently for these clouds. One night, we went in to go get them, and that hobblegrunt I mentioned earlier landed to pick two up. I watched in horror as a long spear went straight through her neck and out through the other side. I watched the life leave her eyes. No. No. She was annoying, but she had started growing on me always purposely taking my spot and nibbling on my wings. All she wanted was to be my friend. At least I think so. And now she was dead. I looked up at the man. Anger filled my heart and I fired at him. The other dragons who had been with me descended on the man and chased him over the hill. I never knew what happened to him because I stayed beside the hobblegrunt. I didn't even get to say goodbye. I didn't even let her know that even though she was annoying and all I did was treat her mean, that I, I actually was starting to like her company. She was so young and now oh, she was gone just like that. As far as I was concerned, man was as bad as that demon thing. From that time on, we did not hesitate. We came in full force whenever hunting for the ground clouds and let man have it. We showed them that we were more powerful. I couldn't bring myself to kill any of them. I had the opportunity to some time after that, but I couldn't. For the first time, I saw a baby female man. One of the other dragons had killed what I assumed was her mother or father. Kind of hard to tell the difference between the males and females. And I sat there watching her. And even though I couldn't understand her language, I knew that she was mourning for her dead parent. Just like I had. As much as I hate these things, I would never want to put them through what I went through losing my family. I'm sure, in their mind, they just think they're defending their territory, poor stupid things. Besides, we were so much more powerful than them that we didn't really have to kill them to get the ground clouds. We just had to scare the crap out of them. Many months passed by, and things were peaceful as long as we kept the demon fed. I looked out towards the main nest in which that demon resided. And as I lay down there to rest on my island, I knew that this false sense of peace wouldn't last forever. <laughs>